Welcome to Data Science Summit. Today we will present how big data helps businesses cut through the information noise. I'm Grzegorz Błaszczyk, CTO of Goody Labs, and today I will show you how we work with really big data. So at Goody Labs, uh, we are a one-stop shop for digital products, meaning that we can do discovery and define, UX design and UI design, then the project development, testing both manual and automatic, and then we do DevOps, meaning uh, deployment, maintenance, and so on. Our client, briefcase.news, a UK-based company, is actually a group of analysts who read the news, curate the news, then select of the whole bunch of uh, news produced hourly every minute. They select and summarize what is worth summarizing and they deliver the coverages for the news to make the informed decisions by businesses. The thing is that the more you have news uh, available for you, you cannot actually decide what's more important, what's less important. So what are the business needs of briefcase.news, our client? Uh, it's an agency. Uh, they consist of more or less 200 analysts in three time zones. They are in London, Singapore, New York, and they monitor over 1,000 sources. To be honest, right now it's more like 1,100 sources. Uh, they are mostly print newspapers and web portals, uh, but also news wires and blogs, as well as some podcasts about finance. Uh, and then curate, uh, they, they curate uh, this information and provide summaries of the news, like an extract, for stakeholders of UK companies. So what they do is actually they get from us the alerts about articles matching some predefined criteria. Uh, example. Uh, let's imagine we want to monitor phrases for the Barclays Bank. So what we will do is actually create some phrases in a Google-like um, criteria or Google-like uh, Google, um, uh, queries. So we say plus Barclays, meaning that it must have Barclays as a word. Uh, it should not get Barclay Brothers because it's uh, also um, the phrase that sometimes is in the news. We do not want a global energy roundup. We do not want European corporate roundup and Asia Pacific corporate calendar and so on and so forth. So you can imagine that uh, we're using Barclays. You, you want to omit um, some kind of really technical news like the stock uh, market, um, uh, really technical news, uh, Form 8.5, which is like uh, quarterly reports or something similar. Uh, so only the news that we are really interested in. Uh, so we limit these article sources to only a subset um, and then we want to get, get some results. Uh, what's the information flow? So let's imagine we have um, an HTML page or an RSS item or an item from the API. It can be a JSON uh, API, it can be a newsML, which is a subset of an XML. So all these things uh, go to our workers. You can treat them as crawlers or some other uh, workers that are written in Node.js. They are scheduled for every five or seven minutes uh, by schedulers and the worker, uh, which is horizontally um, expandable. Mm, the workers fetch the data and put them, um, the, the, the articles, in one um, unified form. 
using RabbitMQ message to the queue. And then from that queue, there is a, a second part of, of, this, uh, of this stick, the, the second end of the stick, which is um, sneakers, also a Node.js application, which reads the unified version of, the, of an article and then saves it to the SQL database for, for instance, this is Postgres and also indexes um, the document inside Elasticsearch engine. And this way um, we save the data, meaning saving the, the, ex the exact data of an article and then send it back to RabbitMQ as a message saying that it, uh, it gets an alert uh, based on the criteria on the, on the phrases that we showed earlier um, and we send it to, um, to Node.js application using all, which uses also MongoDB uh, and this application decides who is really interested like who uh, in uh, among the the analysts is interested into uh, getting the email message here uh, to to the, to the analyst uh, of course we can also send not only an email message about the alert but we can also send uh, some kind of uh, slack message uh, something similar to uh, let's say MS Teams uh, notification or even push notification to, to the analysts, but it will be just too much per minute. So why we need article canonicalization? Um, let's imagine that we have a lot of news wires, newspapers, and all of them need to have uh, at least some mandatory fields. So first of all, article has to have a title has to have a content, meaning that uh, the whole content, the whole article with paragraphs, but also it has some summary. Sometimes it's a, it's a summarized version of an article, sometimes it's just the first paragraph of, the, of an article. Then we have a creation date, then we have last modification date, so sometimes articles get updated, sometimes even 10 times a day, so it must be also saved the last modification date. The publication date, which is the, the date and time that the article was published, it's not almost, uh, not always the same uh, with the creation date and the publication date. And we have some authors, mostly it's one author, but sometimes we have two or even seven uh, authors, uh, and it's a closed subset of authors, meaning we have uh, the whole dictionary of authors of entire, um, let's say, set of newspapers that uh, journalists um, produce articles or write articles for the, for the news. So we have quite, quite a large uh, database of authors. And then we have also, also a, an article source, uh, meaning it's also a closed subset of, uh, of sources. And newspaper. Um, newspaper is not the same as an article source because it might be that, uh, let's say, uh, Financial Times has a section of uh, worldwide news versus US only news versus oil and gas versus different sections. So uh, let's treat article source as a section and the newspaper as a whole um, for Financial Times. And then we have sometimes the meta tags, for example, we get from the news wires also um, data uh, in NewsML, which is a subset of XML, and we can get the metadata pretty quickly and try to, to get and match uh, who the author is, uh, what was the main topic, what was the main section, and so on. So how much data we can consume uh, in, in such a, uh, let's say, uh, elaborated or um, bigger um, uh, scalable um, uh, scalable system. So we can fetch more, more or less 20 gigabytes of plain text per hour, which is quite a lot because if you can assume that uh, we can monitor almost any newspaper in the world using the news wires, 
um, it might be quite uh, overwhelming for um, even for several machines, even several do dozens of machines. But our Node.js application handles it perfectly well. Uh, and we have a constant stream of data. So there is no pause, there is no uh, time off. Uh, these articles are appearing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's just really nonstop, even on Christmas or Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, uh, it's a lot um, of news. So you cannot have a downtime actually. You need to be prepared to, even if you have a downtime, you need to just catch up with the with the news and uh, get the all, all articles in to be to be consumed and to be analyzed. And we also have different languages, uh, which is quite a challenging uh, task for non-Latin characters. Uh, let's assume that we have also Arabic texts, we have also um, Japanese, Chinese, uh, things that we need to take care of, uh, how to unify it actually, how to unify the article in Chinese. Uh, so these are these challenges that we can uh, that we face um, on a daily basis. Uh, so what's next? So after we um, consume so much data, uh, what should be the uh, the human curated uh, coverages that we need to produce? Um, we need to spot the trends. So we need to uh, get some uh, semi-automatic. Uh, data about um, what's happening in the world. Like uh, we have an ad hoc inverted index in Elasticsearch for, for each trending topic. So first of all, we uh, harvest all the phrases that are appearing in the news for the last 60 minutes. And then uh, we try to, to get some trends, to, to get some topics and then uh, we try to uh, monitor it. So we try to mm, monitor if the topic is trending or if it's like really uh, dying uh, to a topic and it should not be uh, monitored anymore. Um, and these alerts and we of course we send alerts based on the dynamic phrases based on these trends. So uh, if you go back to um, to this uh, drawing that uh, shows the, the, the flow of the information. Um, these alerts are uh, sent out based on, not on uh, statically set or preset set of phrases, but uh, they are built, these phrases are built dynamically. Uh, the challenges, uh, human creation has a context. So if you, <laughs> if you compare it to AI, uh, all these fancy words and, and fancy uh, technologies that we see right now on Twitter or um, on the web, mm, they are actually automatic, meaning that you need to have a, a, a huge amount of information to spot the context. And human curation has this context because the analysts know which news is more relevant than the other. So what is breaking news, what is becoming the trending topic, what is expected topic. Then we have human creation can be false in judgments. So uh, there is a censorship. Uh, we just need to be aware of, of such things. And human creation is limited. So uh, we know that we have a limited uh, number of analysts. We have limited number of times, so we in cannot indefinitely um, analyze and, and choose what's, uh, what's most important topic, what's not. We just need to decide uh, here and now. But the human curation is crucial. Uh, meaning if you compare it to the pure AI based um, generation of summaries or picking up the news, uh, you, you might be um, facing some kind of overwhelming of, of, of the news feed. And also, you might get lost in the noise, as the title of this presentation says. So, if we provide a, a technology for the, for the human uh, analysts, and they know how to use it, they, can, they know how to choose the really trending topics, really crucial stuff, uh, this human curation is, is the key point 
because otherwise uh, the reader needs to decide actually. So the, the, the end user needs to decide what's important, what's not. Inspiration. Um, there are two articles <clears throat> for uh, dealing with the, with the uh, curator-based uh, news feed or news summaries. Uh, on medium.com you can check up uh, the rise of the curator economy and why does human curated content matter um, it's actually um, uh, a long uh, living topic because as we as humans uh, tend to um, tend to believe more with uh, other humans uh, choices than just pure technology that is based on raw data. Um, it's also um, this um, blog post uh, for this guy, uh, Rishi, Rishi Kesh Srihari. Um, it says uh, about the curator economy, which means that it becomes even more important than that uh, we have somebody that takes care of, of the news that we read and it's not about censorship, it's more like uh, they know how to, how to distill the, the most important things from the feed of, uh, of everything uh, and get the signal from the noise. If you want to know more about um, our approach to how to get the, big, uh, the, the meaningful data from the big fire hose of data, uh, contact me directly at grzegorz.blaszczyk at goodylabs.com uh, please just contact me directly I can answer some questions uh, that may arise thank you very much and have a great day